Hey guys, even here, and surprise, you got another video from me today. In this video, we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We're gonna start with a statement from 5th place, Arnold Classic finisher James Hollingshed. Now, this statement is very, very interesting. I don't know what's the backstory, but I'm sure you're gonna find this intriguing as well as I did. So... You guys know that throughout this entire Arnold Classic prep, James Hollingshead was coached by Milos Sharchev, right? I mean, he spoke about this on different podcasts, Milos spoke about this very, very often, but as James's prep went along, he stopped mentioning Milos in his posts. He was actually talking more so about his wife, how she's helping him, and then he was also mentioning his business partner and a friend, Jordan Peters, and more often than anybody else, he was speaking about how he was coaching himself. He didn't really specifically say until now. So he said it right now officially, I'm gonna show that to you in a moment. But at the, during the prep, he didn't say at any time that he stopped working with Milos, that he's prepping alone. He was just sharing his opinions. Like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna change that, I don't wanna do this, blah blah blah. So it seemed like he wasn't coached by Milos, but Milos was still reposting his photos. And on podcasts, as you guys know, Milos is very often on different podcasts, he was always speaking about James as one of his clients. So I really had no idea what to think. I assumed that maybe James is keeping Milos in the loop and he's waiting for the peak week where Milos's magic will happen. However, I was super surprised when I watched James' video between the pre-judging and the finals, where he basically decided to listen to Branch Warren. <laughs> and he says in the video that he was picking Branch Warren's brain for the past couple of weeks. I'll be honest with you guys, like the only person's brain I already pinched for the last couple of weeks before a show, because I was in Dallas was Branch, and Branch said it really makes a difference, so I'm willing to try. Um, and I've never really done that since I was a junior. When I was a junior, I used to do all the time, I used to dry out hard for two days because we used to have a two-day two nationals mm -hmm. and I would happily do it so it's just ever since I got bigger like some people are like, oh you need to drink water and all this so Brian just said have some water with each meal today versus yesterday but just like a couple of sips yeah you heard it Branch Warren basically did James Hollingshead's peak week so this guy was coached by Milos Archer, by his wife, by Jordan Peters, by himself, and by Branch Warren. That's five people right now that we know of, and there is probably somebody else who thinks they're prepping James Hollingshead. But in reality, nobody is prepping this guy. I just wonder why the hell did he hire the best coach in the world, Milos Archer? I mean, he did speak about how he hired Milos because he's so passionate about the sport, and you know, he's gonna help him mentally. But I don't think that's it. I'm pretty sure he didn't pay Milos a dime. If he paid him money, most of these prep coaches charge like $3,000 for a prep. So if James paid that money, I think he would have listened. Now, I gotta, I gotta give props to the guy because considering how much of a mess he is, how much of a mess his prep and his head is, he actually did a hell of a job. Honestly, this was his best ever. So he listens to so many people and in the end, I guess he decides himself what he needs to do. So I guess he does have pretty good instincts. Hopefully he will give props to everybody, to his team of coaches, basically. There is probably a couple of other people, I'm sure, that he didn't mention yet. I am personally a big fan of this guy. I always have been. But what he did here with all these coaches, I don't know. It seems like he lost some integrity for me. There is no loyalty here. If you hire a coach and you say that coach is coaching you, then you go through it. Or if you stop working with them, you announce it, you know? You don't let somebody think they're coaching you and you listen to somebody else. That's just, that's just lame. Let's be honest. But I don't know exactly what the backstory is. I asked Milos what the hell happened. He didn't reply yet. If he does, I'm gonna tell you guys, this is it for now. This is what we know. You guys tell me what you think about what happened. But yeah, overall, James brought it, and he was fifth at the Arnold, maybe he's gonna place even better at the Arnold Classic UK, probably, because Samson is not doing it, uh, Rafa is not doing it, so, you know, he might be top two with Heidi Chopin, and if he brings a little bit better package, he actually said that what Branch told him to do, not drink water between the pre and the finals, actually hurt him, he looked flatter, at the finals. So he learned something that he can tweak for the Arnold Classic UK. So let me show you a part where he talks about prepping himself and the mistakes he made. I'm still only really probably presenting like an 85% James because I'm not the best at peaking because I prepped myself in the show. 
Okay. So. So, yeah. Basically, James is prepping himself. That's the end of the story. You guys tell me what do you think about this whole situation and tell me what do you think he's gonna do at the Arnold Classic UK. He was tied with John De La Rosa at the pre-judging and then John beat him in the finals when James dehydrated himself a little bit too much. If he fixes this issue, can he beat John and play top two? Tell me what you think about that as well. Alright, the next thing is very very interesting, it's very positive and very cool to see something like this. You can find it on the YouTube channel Olympia TV, Mr. Olympia TV. And uh, there is a video basically of top 4 classic physique guys training together. It's Chris Bumstead, the Mr. Olympia champion, of course, Wesley Wieser, the new Arnold Classic champion, Ramon Dino, the Mr. Olympia runner-up, and Urs Kletzinski, top three, the Mr. Olympia. They're all training together. Now, this is Chris Bumstead doing the incline dumbbell press with 140s. And you can see how many reps he can do. That's a lot of reps. That's, that's a lot of reps. And control is perfect. It's almost like Nick Walker control, right? Well, maybe not quite, but Nick Walker is like the biggest bodybuilder today and he's incredibly strong. However, Chris is actually doing it very well with the same weight, 140s. Now, let's see how the other guys will do. First of all, yeah, Chris is in the offseason. All these guys are shredded. They have zero body fat left on their bodies, but they're also loaded, right? Like, they are, they're, they're blasting it right now very hard. And Chris is probably, like, off. <laughs> I don't know. Here's Urs, he actually surprised me, he also has quite a lot of strength, he's definitely struggling way more than Chris, but yeah, he almost failed here, I thought this was really dangerous, these guys doing this basically a day after a show, still dehydrated, still with their electrolytes in complete disbalance, so I don't know why would they risk it like this, 140, that's a heavy dumbbell, you know, and as you can see, Urs is dry as hell. So, look at, look at Ramon as well. He's probably even drier, even harder. And now he's gonna be next. He's gonna try himself out here against uh, Chris Bumstead. Let's see if any of these guys are as strong as our Mr. Olympia. So, yeah, Ramon picks up these dumbbells. Oh, he's curling them. He can do, he can do curls with the 40s. With his forearms, it's no wonder. It's no wonder. Let's see how good he is at pressing, and this was crazy that he's doing this stuff, he's risking too much, but yeah, uh, look at his form, he is stretching a little bit too much, he's almost doing flies, so considering that, he's actually having, he actually has a lot of strength as well, he has a lot of control, and this is, this is scary as hell, man, I'm just waiting for a pack there to happen, hopefully he knows what he's doing, but yeah, look at this, he's going beyond failure with 140s like this, and he's throwing the weight like that, Damn, like that, that's <laughs> these guys are putting their whole careers at stake right here. Not worth it for this video, not worth it. I don't even like watching this. I mean, it would be better if they did just a little bit of a pump work, just machine stuff. They can go hard, they can go beyond failure if they want, but not with freaking heavy dumbbells. Look at Ramon here, he's pumped, he looks insanely big. And Wesley, I don't, I don't think these guys, uh, Wesley, Ramon, and Urs, I don't think they're doing too much free weight. Chris is known for that, but. I'm not sure about the other guys, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember ever seeing Wesley doing something like this. Considering that, he has a lot of strength as well, I mean, these guys are massive, especially Wesley, like, he's a tall guy, he's a big guy, so he should be able to handle 140s, and he can, but again, too much of a risk, and I, I don't think they're used to this, so thankfully nobody was hurt, and uh, yeah, apparently Chris seems to be the strongest here, but I think Wesley is bigger. Now, like I said, uh, yeah, sure, Wesley is shredded, and Chris, he's probably not even on... Uh, he's probably on a little bit of something, but I don't think he's taking a lot right now, because why would he? You know, in the offseason, he doesn't need to grow, he's at the weight cap, he needs to maintain uh, his muscle by training, by eating uh, relatively okay, and that's it. There is no progression needed to be made. Wesley has like four pounds left. I think exactly 4 pounds, so he can make more progress, hopefully all will go into his legs, and for the Mr. Olympic, he's gonna be more competitive against Chris, if you guys haven't seen my comparison video, you can go ahead and watch it and see why I don't really think uh, Wesley's gonna beat Chris, but it's a possibility, it's still possible, there are certain things about Wesley that are really outstanding, so as for right now, you can see where this guy is at in terms of strength, Chris is very strong, even though he's not pushing it in the offseason. 
thankfully nobody was hurt in the making of this video if you guys enjoyed my commentary and this entire video like this video subscribe for more content like this thank you so much guys for watching see you soon all the best and bye bye